I wanted to give the story of Anna Karenina a whole new life. The rules of a period film have been completely broken. This is taking style to a whole new level. The beauty of making a film is everything is possible. There are a lot of locations in the script. So I go to locations in Russia and they say, yes, we have made seven Anna Karenina's here. And you'd kind of go, oh, God. He just began to think, God, I'm just following the path of so many other films before me. Until came the day where everything changed. Anna Karenina was written in 1873 and the Russian aristocracy at that time were constantly looking to France and trying to emulate that way of being. You did have these people that were pretending to be something that they weren't all the time. They were living their lives as if upon a stage. I was wishing to myself that I could just set the film in one location. And this gave me the idea to set the majority of the film in a theater. When we all got to hear of it, it energized everybody. We built this enormous mid-19th century theater set, and it became this magical space. The first time I walked into the theater, it was marvelous. I had only seen pictures. What is the point in doing it safely? And what's the point of doing it if you're not totally challenged by it? I think it gives Joe more freedom, actually. He doesn't have rules by which he has to stick to. So it means he can be much freer as a filmmaker. If you're going behind <laughs> Every day there's a new set and the sets metamorphosize in front of our eyes. As you leave the set, there's a new team coming in. It's like a 24-hour factory, really. They shut off elements of it, just with lighting or with walls, to create different spaces inside of it. And each one of them is completely unique. The ones that are the big set pieces are the easier ones to do. I mean, the ball really lends itself to the theatre space. Then we have the opera in the theatre space. Each room, each world can stem off the same one sort of core, which is this theatre. You know as soon as you enter a theatre that you are required to use your imagination, so it's always a space that totally changes, just like that was an ice rink, and then I'm suddenly filled with chandeliers. When we see the Blonskys, who are in the prop room, that is their drawing room. When we see them in the dining room, which is a paint frame, it's their dining room. So once we're in and we know where we are, we are absolutely believing that these things are happening within this space. Who is he? He's a rich, good-looking cavalry officer. There's nothing better to do than make love to pretty women. The kinetic energy that progresses the drama from scene to scene is a real attempt to create this momentum. Joe wanted to make Anna Karenina like a ballet. What interests me is how rhythm can express emotion. The ball scene in particular, I loved shooting. It was a completely extraordinary thing, telling the story through the moves and how much a part of the character the dance sequence was. And then again, you know, how Joe was shooting it. It's rare that dancing is filmed well. You need sometimes to go further away or come closer in order to enhance the beauty of it. And so in that sense, I think Joe understands dance very, very well. And he dances along and the camera dances along. What was great was working with Dario because for certain scenes he already wrote the music beforehand. His music inspired a certain way of thinking. All these scenes have come to life thanks to the music. There's one element of the film that is very different, which is the Levin story. Levin turns his back on this superficial society and chooses to seek a more authentic mode of living. So his sequences are shot in location in Russia and have a more traditional cinematic reality. A great director, in my opinion, is somebody who can convincingly create a world on screen that the audience will believe in. The puppet theatre that I grew up in was a crazy, beautiful, handmade world, and that's what we tried to create with this film. We are in a world that offers itself up as unreal, in fact, as almost magical and fantastical. We know that our imagination is going to be used, we know that reality is going to be suspended, but I think ultimately we're trying to hold a very beautiful mirror up to life.